Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is AJ and today we're going to build ourselves a gaming PC. So a bit of a background why we are doing this video. Actually, I want to share with you guys my journey in building my first PC ever after 10 long years. Yeah, you heard that right? I actually built my PC before. That was more than 10 years ago, I was back in university. And during that time, there were not much games that rely on heavy duty graphics cards yet. And AMD is not one of the well known brands of CPU, only Intel. I still remember the game that we were playing last time Battle Realms, StarCraft, Dota 1, World of Warcraft, Ragnarok, Counter Strike, those old but good games. And even though all of those are good and fun, after building my first PC, actually the trend went on from PC building to laptops. And I also went that way with all my games playing on the laptop and then I went on in using MacBooks. And actually this is the first time that I am going back in PC building on Windows. So I am very excited to share with you guys this journey with me. And I hope that you will stay until the end to see if we'll be able to make this work. So are you ready? First of all, I would like to introduce you to all the parts that we're going to use in this build. For the processor, I went with the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D with the 8-core and 16-core uh, thread processor. Uh, it's a 5 GHz max boost with 4.2 GHz base. Some would say that this will be a bit of an overkill with the graphics card that we are using but since I got this and the graphics card in a motherboard in a bundle price, I think I just made a very good deal on it. And just some fun fact for you guys, actually this will be my first AMD processor build. Uh, all the pieces that I built including the very last one that I did more than 20 years ago is actually all Intel PC. So this will be my first time using an AMD chip and I'm both excited and a bit scared and hopefully everything will go smoothly. For the motherboard, I went with ROG Strix B650A Gaming Wi-Fi. So it is a full ATX uh, motherboard that supports AM4 and AM5 chipsets. And honestly speaking, I really like the design of this motherboard. And as you can see, it really matches the aesthetics that we are trying to build here in our PC. It's also quite nice to see that uh, ROG included like this a key ring that you can see up there uh, in the motherboard in itself as a freebie. I also like the included stickers. I know I can put them somewhere. As you can see even at the back, uh, they made sure that it is really a good design and even the aesthetic in itself is really nice. For the graphics card, I chose the ASRock Steel Legend series graphics card which is an AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT 16GB DDR6. I chose this graphics card because of its aesthetic design. It will go well with my build which is a pure white PC build. At first, I was actually trying to look for the 7900XTX or the 7900XT because it has a bigger uh, RAM size. But because this graphics card was actually on sale during that time, I think this was a great choice for this build. It also has ARGB on the fans and it can be controlled by a software from Astrak.
main storage, I chose the T-Force uh, Cardera A4402 terabytes NVMe card. Uh, this is from Team Group. Uh, this has a maximum read and write of up to 7,000 Mbps. And what's cool about is that since it includes a heatsink uh, in the box, actually if you need a storage uh, extender for your PS5, this is also a very good choice. So for our RAM, we have another product from Team Group, the T-Force Delta DDR5. It has a lifetime warranty and it also has RGB at the top. RAM drives are typically robust, but it's still good to see that there is this logo for the lifetime warranty, so at least you have that peace of mind. We got the white color to match for the aesthetic of our build. Actually, this is one of the last items that we needed to wait for before we start our build. And that was because of my fault, I ordered the wrong type of RAM. So I needed to return that one first and uh, reorder this uh, new set of RAMs. Our main uh, cooling system that we will be using for our build, I went with the Deepcool LT720WH uh, AIO cooling fans. Uh, actually, this is also my first time going to use an AIO, so hopefully I'll be able to connect all of these things together properly and uh, with the radiator and stuff. fans and the main pump or the head pump uh, also has an RGB lighting on it and it would look very nice inside our uh, white uh, PC case. The only thing is that uh, the fans in itself don't have any RGB lighting on it but I think with our build we have enough RGB to light up the whole inside of our PC case. And now for our power supply. I chose the Tough Power GFA3 from Thermaltake with an 850 watts power and also it's a fully modular power supply. This power supply is PCIe Gen 5 ready with a 16 pin connector, ATX3 compatible, and also it has a 10 year warranty from Thermaltake. I was also actually pleasantly surprised to see a pouch inside this power supply, and when I opened it, I saw that it has all the cables inside. So, this is a nice touch from Thermaltake to put this. Uh, in a pouch so that uh, all the other cables that we are not going to use we can just put it back inside the pouch and the power supply itself also is in a, a black colored pouch uh, to protect it and I really appreciate what the manufacturer did for their packaging uh, this makes it more fully usable and also storage wise it is a very good idea so good job Thermaltake Finally, we have our power supply sleeved cable from Asia Horse. These are all white cables that we're going to use in our build. If you remember, we have a power supply but all the cables are black. So I just bought this extension cable so that uh, we can use it and keep our theme aligned uh, with our white PC build. In reviewing my skills in doing this PC build. Shout out to TechSource and PC Builder for their great step by step guide on building a PC. And if you'd also like to build your own PC, I would highly recommend their videos and I will leave their link in the description.
description below. I hope you guys like this video and will follow me until the end to see and make sure that this PC will run successfully. If you happen to like this video and you like the build that we're using today, I'll also leave all the links of the parts that I've used in the link in the description below. So what are we waiting for? Let's start! First off, we need to prepare our motherboard and place it in a stable location. And the top of the box of the motherboard is one of the recommended places where you can work uh, with your motherboard. The first thing that we're going to place is our CPU and it is located in the middle. Uh, you need to remove this latch in order to release the locking mechanism. It may have looked that I am struggling to remove that latch but actually I was just being very careful as it was my first time working with this kind of uh, CPU. And once this is ready, we can carefully get our CPU out of its packaging and carefully placing it in that middle portion of the motherboard. We need to be careful and make sure that the arrow on both the chip and the motherboard is on the same place before we carefully place our CPU in the middle. Just need to make sure that the uh, CPU is properly seated in its place before we close that latch and lock it up. Once we lock this latch, uh, we will hear and see that the middle portion will pop out. Don't be scared, that's normal. And just need to remove that cover. Uh, and we are done with our CPU. We will now proceed in uh, placing our RAM sticks. Uh, we have two of them. We need to make sure that we are placing it in the correct positions to be able to utilize the dual channel. You can check your motherboard manual uh, for the placement of the RAMs, but typically uh, it will be the second and the fourth slot uh, from your CPU. So as you can see here, I'm placing it first on the fourth slot and then afterwards I'll place it in the second slot. So just make sure that uh, there is a space in between. And if in your own build you're going to use four sticks of RAM, it is necessary to get uh, the same RAM type with the same memory and everything uh, so that it will not have any conflicts uh, with the motherboard and its operation. Once we are done with our RAM, we will now proceed in uh, placing our storage, which is the M.2 NVMe. We just need to unscrew these covers and from here we'll be able to see where we can place our NVMe storage. In placing our memory stick, we just need to make sure that we align the latches. There's only one way that this one will go inside so you cannot actually make a mistake in putting this you just need to push it and make sure that once you put it in uh, there is a latch uh, beneath to make sure that it is not going to get loose and once you're done with that uh, there is the sticker uh, at the back of the cover uh, this one is for cooling the uh, memory stick uh, to dissipate the heat and just make sure that it is aligned before you place it back. So you can see I'm uh, struggling a bit in placing it because of the sticker and because of my fat fingers. <laughs> Once that it is properly aligned, we can just screw it back up and we're done with our memory stick. Now we are ready to put our motherboard in our PC case. So the case that we are going to use is the Montec King 95 Pro. It is a dual chamber PC case with uh, tempered glass as a front and side panels. And if you are interested uh, in this PC case, I actually have a video of the unboxing for this PC case. 
Link of this video is on the top right corner of your screen. You can also see here that I already placed uh, two of our extension cables uh, from Asia Horse. Uh, this is just to uh, make sure that we have enough space before we place our radiator and AIO pump. So we just need to make sure that our motherboard is aligned with all the standoffs in your PC case and uh, we can do our screwing. Hmm, that sounded a bit off. We can start putting all the screws into our motherboard. And uh, we just need to make sure that we place all the screws first. Uh, do not tighten it at first. Just make sure that it is placed properly. Once you have put all the screws, around 9 of them, then you can start to tighten all the screws. Placing our PC case aside first, we need to prepare our AIO. So we need to put the correct brackets uh, for our AIO. I am using an AMD uh, CPU. So I am putting an AMD bracket on my AIO. How the brackets are placed is dependent on how the manufacturer has uh, done it. So make sure you read uh, the instructions on the manual of your AIO if you're using an AIO and use the correct bracket for the type of uh, CPU you are using. Next, uh, we need to place all the fans in our radiator. Fan orientation is actually important because it can either be an intake or an exhaust. In my case, I want it to be an exhaust. So I'm placing it uh, in this position. Uh, there is actually some signs uh, in the uh, fan itself on where is the airflow going in and going out but just a general rule of thumb usually it is uh, face sucks it means that it is usually pulling air in from the uh, logo side of the fan so since i am going to use this as an exhaust fan all of the fans are placed with the logo on the top side just be careful on screwing all of your fans in. You might face some issues if you accidentally punctured your radiator wall. Once all the fans are secured, uh, we will now connect all our fans together and connect them in what they call a daisy chain. So what a daisy chain basically means is that we are just placing all of our fans into one connection and the output of it is just a single connection that we will connect with our CPU fan in our motherboard. Before proceeding, we actually need to do one more thing. We need to remove the bracket uh, from our motherboard. This bracket is typically used for uh, normal CPU fans, but since we are using an AIO in this build, uh, we will be removing this bracket and uh, change it with the standoffs that are included in our AIO. Once you have removed the brackets, uh, it is uh, best practice to put these brackets back into your motherboard box. So in case you want to sell off the motherboard uh, next time, you can still put those brackets back in place. So these are the standoffs that are included in my AIO. So I'm just putting it uh, all in place of that bracket. And this is where we will uh, actually latch on our AIO pump. The next step is to place our AIO pump in the radiator. So make sure that all your cabling, uh, you need to push it into the back of the place before you screw in this radiator. Uh, it will be a very tight fit at the top of the motherboard if you don't do this properly. In the case of my radiator, it has 12 screws. So I'm just tightening all the screws up in a crisscross pattern to make sure that it holds tight. Once that is done, we are now ready to put our pump in. So first things first, we need to make sure that we remove the cover from the face of the uh, pump that is touching the CPU. While we are making sure that we don't touch the middle portion since that is where the thermal paste is located. After that, place your pump on top of your CPU and attach all the screws uh, with the uh, standoffs that we have placed before. And just make sure that it is tight. And we just make sure that all the cables for our pump are neatly organized. 
Okay, now we need to place our pump control into our motherboard. So we just need to find the uh, section where we can place the pump controller. And afterwards, we can arrange all the cables. Make sure it's nice and tidy as well. And then we can also put back the uh, cover for our pump. Now, let's switch our eyes on the back portion of our PC case. This is where we'll be running all our cables. And since I will not be using uh, HDD drives, I wanted to remove this uh, HDD bracket at the back of my PC case just to make more room uh, for me to work on. This PC case also has a uh, fan controller already built in uh, with all the fans uh, that Montec has provided as well. And if you remember the radiator, it also has fans, so I put all the fans in that controller as well. The cables that I am holding now are the cables for our front panel. So we will just push it on uh, to the correct position so that we can place it on our motherboard. So as you can see here, I am placing the USB 3 uh, into the motherboard as well as the USB-C uh, connection that is located in our front panel of our PC case. Even though that the sockets uh, at the motherboard only accepts one position when you plug it in, you still need to be careful because you might damage the pins if you put it in the wrong way. Once I have secured the USB 3 uh, into the motherboard, I place the uh, USB-C. Uh, this one is much easier to plug in compared to the USB 3 header. Next, we need to plug in our audio for our front panel into the motherboard. And finally, the cable for our power button for our front panel. Now let's connect the uh, controller for our fans. Remember we have that fan controller at the back of our PC case. So we are just placing uh, this fan controller into our motherboard so that we can control it from our BIOS. And if your PC fans also has RGB like mine does, you also need to plug in uh, the RGB controller into the motherboard so that we can control the RGB for the fans on our BIOS as well. We are now ready to place our uh, PSU or our power supply uh, with all the cables at the back of our case. So this one will depend on uh, which type of components you have. And for our build, uh, we will be using the very typical ones uh, that we need to use like powering up the uh, CPU, powering up the uh, GPU, and as well as some power for our fans. Once I have all the cables in place, I am now mounting the power supply at the back of my PC case. Now it is just a matter of uh, connecting the right connectors to the right extension sleeves and to the right power supply. So and in case you're wondering what the SATA power supply is for, uh, this is uh, for the uh, fan controller as you can see on the upper left portion of the case. That is the fan controller and it is controlled by two uh, power supply for SATA. By the way, if your motherboard is like mine, as you can see, I'm removing any stickers in the motherboard uh, because this might affect with the heat. So just make sure that all of those stickers in your component is removed. And, and now the final component for our build, our GPU, the Radeon RX 7800 XT. So I'm removing all the plastic components. Actually, there is a lot of plastic, so I needed to make sure that I had removed everything 
because it may affect with the uh, heat dissipation of this uh, graphics card. So once uh, that is done, I removed the cover for the PCI and uh, proceeded in placing the GPU on the PCI slot. So make sure that you will hear the click uh, when you place the uh, GPU. Uh, if you can see here, uh, there is a small click that I heard. I, I thought it's already secured in place, but when I was started screwing it in, that's when I noticed that it is not pushed in entirely. I gave it one more big push until I hear that click. Then I proceeded to secure that GPU in place. Again guys, fat fingers in action. So you can see guys, the struggle is real. And finally, I was able to put that last screw in to secure our GPU in place. Now we just need to put our uh, 6 plus 2 PCI power cable. Uh, we are also using our uh, extension cables, the white extension cables to make it look uh, uniform in our build. So we're just going to place all our cables and stretch it to the back to connect it to our power supply. And just like that, we're almost done. We just need to do some cable management at the back of our PC to make it nice and pretty and a little bit organized. So afterwards, I just close it up and we're ready to try this out. Okay guys, thank you for joining me until now in this video. And now, it's the moment of truth. So... I'm excited and a bit scared as well. I don't know really what will happen. This will be the first time that I will boot up this PC. So I just connected the uh, Wi-Fi uh, antenna as well. So with you guys, let's hope, let's cross our fingers that this will work. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. I forgot to plug it up. For you guys out there, please do remember to plug your PC before you try to start on. Actually, I was quite nervous when it didn't start up. Okay, so again, come with me guys. Let me see, there's a power button, here we are. Okay, three, two, one. And it's alive! Can we see our screen? Oh, the RGB is so beautiful. Everything is working. The screen, let's see. Is the screen going to show up? Let's see, hopefully. Hey, there we go. Wow, that is such a nice feeling. Wow. I'm actually quite proud of myself. I actually didn't know how this will turn out, but looks like everything is working. Uh, the RGB on the uh, uh, graphics card is working as well, and uh, all the RGB lights is working. And uh, we can see uh, from the screen uh, that uh, we have the BIOS running. So, wow, thank you guys for joining me. And it has really been a privilege for me to share this journey with you. And I hope you learned something too and everything uh, that I used uh, in order to make this build and the videos that I used in order to support me uh, in guiding me and doing all this build, I will leave it in the description below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more of my content. And if there is something that you want to ask me about this build, anything about this PC and what we have done here, you can leave it down in the comment section below. And of course, if you have any more suggestions, anything that you want me to look into and uh, anything that you want to see in this channel also comment down in the section below i would like to hear more of your thoughts on this thank you very much guys for watching and see you in the next one
thing it worked. <laughs>